Hello there, everyone. This is Missionary Selma Edker once again, broadcasting from St. Charles, Missouri in the United States. How is everyone out there today? As always, I am here. Let me get situated here just the way I need to be. Okay, that's, I think that'll work. What can I help you with, honey? I guess we got it right here. Okay. I'm Selma. My husband, Norman, is standing right here. Hey, hi there. Anybody there? <laughs> There's one. One person. Hey, you're you're in the center of the universe. It's you and I. <laughs> awesome. This is my name right here, Selma Etker. And this is my wonderful honey, Norman. We've been married now for three and a half years. And uh, hello there, Rachel, I think it said. Good to see everyone this morning. As always, when we come on Periscope, it's only to talk about Jesus and the way of salvation. Welcome, everyone. I hope that there will be some out there today who will have ears to hear about Jesus because it is the most important message you will ever hear in your life about how you can be spiritually born again so that you can go to heaven when you die. Hello there, sad luck, sad luck, whatever it is, <laughs> welcome. We are Protestant Christian missionaries and that means we believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible. Hello. Um, the Protestant Christian Bible is our current English Bible. It was translated into English from the Greek in 1500 AD. And it is the only Bible that has the true word from God to all mankind. All the other Bibles and religious books are false and they do not contain the, tr the truth of God's message about the fact that you have to be spiritually born again to go to heaven. We have a website, howtobecomeachristiantoday.com. This is my husband's name right here. And we have just launched... Uh, no. We have just launched um, an internet radio station. It's named God's Spokesman, and you can go to that radio station on hearamongnews.org, and it is <clears throat> there are many, many. Um, Oh, I can't think of the word I want to say. Manuscripts, ancient manuscripts that have been preserved that that have the Word of God in them. And the, the current English Bible that we have um, has the same message that those ancient manuscripts contain. So it is confirmed that it is the Word of God. Anybody that's interested um, in sending questions or comments, uh, you can do so. Questions at mongnews.org. And so, our radio station, all right, our radio station um, is on 24-7 and Monday through Friday. Good. Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Central Standard Time in the United States, Norman is will be on live. And uh, he's been working on that now for several weeks, getting it set up, a lot of uh, technical issues to deal with. But that's another avenue that God has opened up for us to be able to talk to the world about Jesus being the only way of salvation. 
all all of the religions of the world say that there are many ways that people can go to heaven um, by various kinds of works or some don't even believe in heaven many don't believe in hell but they are just denying God's word because according to the Protestant Christian Bible heaven and hell are very real and everyone who rejects Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior will tragically go to hell when they die. That is what compels Norman and I to come on Periscope to share the gospel message with the world. What version is that? It, it can be any of the um, translations. The Protestant Christian Bible is we distinguish it mainly from the Roman Catholic Bible. The word Protestant came into being in protest against the Roman Catholic Church's false teachings. And that's where the word Protestant came from. Okay, well, thank you for coming on. Hope you can come back again. I'm on Sunday. Tuesday and Wednesday at 11 o'clock, and Norman's on every morning at 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. So, the Roman Catholic Bible is not the true Word of God. The Roman Catholic Church, everything about it is a false religion. Thank you. Bye. The Roman Catholic Bible contains many books that are just man-made-up stories. They're not from God. And the, the, um, the Quran is not from God. The Mormon Bible is not from God. The Jehovah Witness Bible is not from God. All other religious books are not from God. They're just stuff that people made up. And that is the work of the devil. The devil is behind all of these false religions, all of these books that are written. It's all lies of the devil. And the reason why the devil influences people to read, to write these books and to found these religions and to follow these religions is because the devil final destination is hell and he is working diligently to take millions and millions of people to hell with him that is a tragedy god does not want people to go to hell and neither do i neither does my husband norman and oh what about the king james version what what's your question we like the King James Version, but we also read other versions. Hello there, Temer808. Welcome. Remember that first we, Christian version was in 1500, 100 years before the King James. The King yes, James came off of it. Yes, I already okay. told them. The, uh, Norman was reminding me. The... The, does that mean you're Russian? That the uh, that our current Protestant English Bible was trans first translated in 1500 A.D. Okay, well, welcome, Russia. And that was before the King James Version. So there are some people who are legalistic that will only read the King James Version, but we are not that way. Hello, is it Medet or Medit? I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I appreciate you coming on. Hope you can stay and listen to this all-important message about Jesus and the way of salvation. I was thinking this morning or last night about my broadcast today. 
the Geneva Bible. Um, you know, I don't remember. But they're all after. So. Okay, Norman just reminded me they're all after. What are you saying, honey? Coverdale he asked about the, the yeah. Geneva Bible. Yeah, Coverdale was the first one. Let me get it out here. Okay. <coughs> Let me, uh, where's my chart at? I'm going to put my chart to all the Oh, I don't oh, know, right honey. Here. Okay, Norman <coughs> just came in. He has a chart <coughs> on the Bibles, and he's trying to find that for me. All right, thanks. Are you seeing it, honey? Yeah, I got it. Okay. <coughs> All right, be just a moment here. We'll have some information. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, man. Okay. All right, we have a... Hello, hello, you're 21. Hello everyone, welcome. Good to see you. For those of you who maybe don't know yet, hi there. This is my name, Selma Edker, and I'm in St. Charles, Missouri in the United States. And we're talking about the Bible versions right now. And we have a, a chart here of the Bible versions uh, beginning in the 1500s and uh, it says the Wittenberg Martin Luther Bible was published in uh, 1534 that was in German and then in the English Bible 1526 by Tyndale and Coverdale um, and there's just a whole long chart here of when the Bibles were published in all the different languages of modern Europe. And I'm sure you could Google that if you want to, you know, if you really want to know that. But um, I've read, uh, I have a book about um, the writing of, of the first English version in 1500. Um, William Tyndale. Is that right, honey? William Tyndale, I think. And um, he was killed for translating the Bible into English because the religious leaders didn't want the common people to be able to read the Bible for themselves. They just wanted to be self-important and control the people. But he loved the Lord so much. Hold on just a second. Let me, I've got that right here. Yeah, here it is. William Tyndale. Right there. He translated most of the Bible into English before he was killed. Just because he loved God that much, they... Not only they took him out um, and strangled him and then tied him to a stake and burned his body. So he was a true martyr for the Lord. It's because he wanted everybody to be able to read God's word. So that, that was the beginning of our current English Bible. So... The King James Version was published in 1611 and many other, many other versions. But as I was saying, it's the Protestant Christian Bible is the only true word from God to man. All the other versions are, are just false. So, being a Christian is not just... A name it's not just a word it's not something that happens by default or just because you go to church 
being a Christian, a true Christian, is to be a born-again follower of Jesus. Jesus said you must repent and you must be born again. And that is the only way that a person can go to heaven and escape the fiery lake of hell. Thank you. So I was um, thinking about, well, I'm sorry, I wish I could speak Russian, but I don't know any Russian. So I was thinking about um, my message, what I wanted to say today. And I thought, I was gonna, I'm going to ask you a rhetorical question. It's not something that you need to answer, but just, just to think about. These were, this was my, my thoughts. Was what kind of personality do you have? What kind of person are you? Do you like to be one who follows the crowd? Do you want to be pleasing to others? Well, I'm sorry. I appreciate you listening. Do you like to um, stand alone and take charge of things? Are you a leader or are you a follower? Are you timid or are you courageous? Do you have the fortitude to stand against the majority? to go against the tide. Being a follower of Jesus is not being one of the majority because most of the world don't even want to hear about Jesus, much less be a follower of Jesus. And Jesus himself knew that would be the case. He said, broad is the way, right here, 69 years old. Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many will go down that broad way. And he said, narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few will find it. It's not because they can't find that way. It's because they reject that way. Thank you. And I have some uh, scriptures that I'm going to share that that really tell, and it's the words of Jesus, what it takes to be a true follower of Jesus. And just on a personal note, well, um, my title isn't a teacher. I am a missionary, but in a sense, you could say I'm a teacher in that I am telling people about Jesus and the way of salvation and how you can be born again. And so I'm sharing now in particular about what it is to be a Christian and that it is not a popular way to go and that you have to be a true follower in order to stand against the majority, to go against the crowd. And, you know, I've not, in the natural, I've never been that kind of person. I always wanted to fit in. I wanted, never wanted to stand out. I didn't want to be noticed. I wanted to be accepted. And... But when I got saved, when I became born again, okay, I'm sorry. Why do you keep saying you're sorry? Oh, he's saying I have poor English. I can't understand you. Oh, okay. Well, I'm telling uh, adios. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So, but Jesus says to be his follower. All right, thanks. To be his follower, you have to stand against the crowd. He said in John 15, in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. I have chosen you out of the world, and therefore the world hates you. People who do not accept Jesus, they don't want to be around you. And in fact, I'm going to read, uh, I have some other, just a few scriptures here. This is in Luke chapter 6. Jesus says, Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. So, Jesus is saying if everybody loves you and thinks you're great, then you're not a true follower of Jesus because most people are not a follower of Jesus. Most people... There's many people who say they love Jesus, but they don't live by the Bible. They don't obey Jesus' teachings. They're just, it's just a name. They call themselves a Christian, but they've never been born again. But Jesus says, you are blessed when everybody doesn't like you. When it's because... You are a follower of Jesus. When it's for Jesus' sake that other people hate you, then you are blessed, and you should rejoice about that. He also said in Matthew chapter 10, a couple more verses, he says, A man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that takes not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. To be a true Christian, Jesus has to be first in your life. Even if it means your family doesn't want to be around you. Even if your family members reject Jesus, if you are a follower of Jesus, he has to be number one. You can't just uh, be pleasing to your family if you really want to live for Jesus. And here's the thing. There's two, two major benefits I'm going to say, just to put it in a nutshell, two major benefits of being spiritually born again and loving Jesus. And of course, the big thing is that you'll go to heaven when you die and not to hell. But also, everyone who lives on this earth is going to have problems and trials. All right, thank you is going to have problems and trials and difficulties and heartaches. That's just part of life here on this earth, whether you're born again or not. But the great thing is, if you're born again and loving Jesus, Jesus is going to help you through all the difficulties of life. And if you don't have Jesus in your life, then everything's just going to be that much harder. So, why would anybody want to choose hell? That's, that's the question. And the only answer I know is that people 
prefer to live their life of love, sin love that and just enjoy all their sinful ways. Here's something I know. You can share that. That has to go along when everybody speaks well of you. Yeah, I just read that. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, sorry about that. Uh, it's okay, no, honey. I'll stay out of your biz. <laughs> so, my, I'm laughing. My, my wonderful husband has just brought me some scriptures to read, not knowing that I had just, just read those. But he's, um, he and I together, we love Jesus with all our being. And that's why we take this time to come on Periscope. To tell anyone who will listen that you can choose for yourself to be able to go to heaven. You don't have to go to hell when you die. And it's really the only thing that it costs you to make that decision is that you have to humble yourself and surrender yourself unto the Lordship of Jesus Christ to allow God to help you and to be in control of your life instead of allowing the devil to control your life. It's as simple as that. It is by God's grace that we are saved. Ephesians 2, 8 in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. It is by grace we are saved through faith and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And the next verse says, It's not by works, lest anyone should boast. Jesus knows <laughs> how people are. And, and he knows that if we could work our way to heaven, people would be so vain that they would be bragging about what they've done, all the good things they've done, so that God would let them into heaven. But you can't work your way to heaven. It is impossible because God says so. And the amazing thing is, it's free. God doesn't make you. He doesn't require you to do anything to get to heaven except to humble yourself and accept this free gift of grace, the free gift of salvation. But people are so rebellious, they want to do it their way. And that's not acceptable to God. It is by grace. Hello there, welcome. God's grace is his love for every person in the world. It's his favor toward each one. And why does he have favor? What, it, what does that mean? It means God does not want you to go to hell. I am just fine, thank you. Thank you for, for listening. God's grace condescends down to every person wooing people to turn and to seek after God. God's grace is his enabling power to help you understand about God, who is a spiritual substance. And within the spiritual substance is three persons. And in the New Testament, they're revealed as the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So God, my health is very good. Thank you for asking. I hope you are well. God's grace is reaching out to all people. It says in the Bible, God is long suffering, not willing that any should perish. That means that God is waiting and waiting and waiting tenderly wooing and calling people to seek after him, to seek after the truth. 
to listen to the gospel message of salvation. And if you do that, he will help you to understand about it, that Jesus alone is the way of salvation. And how did that happen? Jesus, being a divine God-man, thank you. Jesus, being a divine God-man here on earth, chose out of his immeasurable love to go to the cross to pay the penalty for the sins of all mankind. Jesus shed his sinless blood on the cross to take the punishment for our sins. He substituted his own self for each one of us. And he allowed God to pour out his wrath upon him for, for the sins of everyone so that we don't have to suffer the wrath of God. That is called the atonement. The atonement on the cross. And yet, most people reject that. Just because Jesus did it doesn't mean you automatically go to heaven. I am in the United States in St. Charles, Missouri, just about in the center of, of the United States. So a person has to hear, listen, receive this message of Jesus' atonement, believe it by faith with God's grace and then to be born again repentance is required repentance is let me get my little sign here i want to hold up here we go grace justification and repentance Justification is talking about Jesus' atonement on the cross. We are justified because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. That means when we accept by faith what Jesus did and turn to God in repentance, we then are able to come into God's presence. And are able to go to heaven. But repentance is more than saying, I'm sorry, and I believe Jesus died for my sins. You do have to, to acknowledge that. You do have to say, God, please forgive me. I'm sorry for my sins. But the important thing is then you have to say, God, I will obey you. I will obey the teachings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. I will live by the word of God. And this is the only true word of God in the New Testament of the Protestant Christian Bible. It is surrendering your heart, your will, your entire being unto the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Thelma? Yes, honey. And uh, I know that it's implied, but I think you really need to, to reinforce that each individual has to read that themselves. That this idea mm -hmm. that you have to go to the church and somebody explain right. something to you. You don't. You have right. to read it, and guess what? You have to understand what Jesus is plainly saying, not your interpretation. And I think that's the key. If you go along with the crowd, they'll believe anything. That's what right. we got. So, right. You know. Yeah. I know you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, and Norman was reminding me, and which I always try to remember to say, is that you have to read the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament for yourself. You have to read it. Number one, you don't have to believe what you hear me say or what Norman says. 
read it for yourself that is the most important thing in the world read this for yourself and do not go to these various churches and accept what they say it means you have to believe you what there jesus says jesus tells very clearly in the new testament that you have to repent and you have to be born again that you have to obey jesus said if you love me obey my word keep my commandments that's what it is to be spiritually born again. That's what repentance is. And when you make that decision that you want to be born again, and God knows who is sincere, you cannot fool God, you can't mock God. Nothing's going to happen if you're not sincere. But when you turn to the Lord and you say, God, please forgive me for my sins. I will obey you. I will live for you. Then it is a supernatural transformation that happens within you. The Holy Spirit of God then coexists within you and the love of God is shed into your heart. That's what the Bible says. And it is that love of God, the compassion of God that is in my heart and Norman's heart and everyone else who has been born again. That is what compels us to tell other people about the salvation message so that they can experience the same thing. Jesus said, told his disciples to go and teach and make more disciples. That means tell the world about Jesus, that it is only through faith in Jesus, through God's, by God's grace, faith in Jesus and repentance. That is how you are born again. That is what transforms you into a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's what the Word of God says. It's like you're a brand new person. And that's why it's called being born again. You're no longer the old person that you were. The Bible says old things are passed away and all things are new. You're a new person loving Jesus, living for Jesus, obeying Jesus. And it is, it is the most wonderful thing, the most important decision everyone has to make. Because if you do not choose to be born again and live for Jesus, you will go to hell when you die. And that's, that's just a horrible thing. It is for eternity. Once you die, it's too late to change your mind. So even though I shared these scriptures with you, the price, if you want to put it this way, the price you have to pay to be a follower of Jesus, meaning that many people that you love and want to be with may turn against you and reject you, Okay, just me. Well, here's the deal. Those people who go to hell are not God's children. That's the difference. Most people believe that everyone is a child of God. But that's not true. It is only those who are born again who are the children of God. And it says that very plainly in the Bible. You can read it in, in the Gospel of John um, and in other places. It is only those who have been spiritually born again who, who then are the children of God who get to go to heaven. 
Everyone who rejects Jesus and the salvation message is not a child of God. And that's why they go to hell. That, that means people that, that refuse to make a decision, too. They say, well, I don't so, um, yes, everyone, in answer to your, your question here, everyone who is not born again is a sinner. We are sinners by nature because of the original sin committed by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden that they, when they committed that first sin in disobeying God, they then had a sin nature. Before that, they were completely innocent. But because of that, now every person that is born now has a sin nature. And the Bible says that when you're born again, then you are set free from sin. You're set free from the sin nature. You are set free from guilt of your sin. You are set free from condemnation. <laughs> well, that, that is true. He was dumb for disobeying God. But... That's just the way it is. Because of that sin, everyone now is born a sinner. But you see, it is God's grace, God's grace, his love, his favor. He has made a way for you to escape that sin nature, to be set free from that sin nature, and be a new creation in Christ Jesus. And when you're born again, you are no longer a sinner, but you are a child of God. You see how, how easy that is, how plain it is? You don't have to live under that, well, I can't help it, Adam made me become a sinner and I don't like it. God's grace is... The, the core definition is unmerited favor. God doesn't have to do anything for us. He could just leave us all in sin and let everybody go to hell. But God is love. And it says, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, meaning go to hell but have everlasting life in heaven. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, God has made a way for you. And if you don't want to believe that or accept it, then just go ahead and go to jail. You're, you know, you can argue that point all day long, but it's not going to help you any. God's grace is there for you right now. If you have, there's a scripture in the Bible that Jesus says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So either you open up your ears, meaning your, your mind, your heart, and, uh, and believe the gospel message and accept it, and choose to become born again so that you can be free of what Adam did to you, if you want to put it that way. Or you can just uh, complain about it and say it's not fair and go on living in sin and go to hell when you die. That's your choices. So, you know... That's the reason why I am here on Periscope, the reason why Norman comes on, is to let the people of the world know, hear, and understand what has happened because of that original sin, and to hear about God's grace, that he has made a way for everyone to be set free from that sin, because of God's great love, he's made a way for you to go to heaven. So yeah. you either accept it or you reject it. It's as simple as that. I wonder if I could uh, 
I share something with the fellow too. Okay. I asked him if he would like to. Okay. Uh, my husband Norman is standing here. He wants to know if you'd like to hear a word from him. He has something he'd like to tell you if you're interested in listening. So if you could just give me a yes or a no, that would be great. So, I, I, I think I've said all that I can say, and as always, um, okay, does that mean you want to hear what he wants to say? I don't know, that doesn't make it very clear. Okay, honey, he said sure, he'll listen. He'll listen. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess... Here. No, 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 you just go ahead. I'll well, I'm about to... done. Uh -huh. That's okay. Um, That's okay, I'll sit here. It's okay. okay, I want you in the picture, too. Uh, to begin with, hi, hi there. I want you to know that you now are looking at the best looking couple in the United <laughs> States right now. You are blessed, okay? Just want you to know that. And if you give an amen, then we'll make you the second best looking guy. He, or said, a, he said agree. Okay. <laughs> you know, this whole thing that Selma's talking about, is it, it's all by faith, Okay. Simple, all right? It's a faith thing, all right? So, the simple truth, the Genesis story, the Old Testament tells what happened in the Garden of Eden. You believe that by faith, okay? Then, Genesis 3.15 was the promise given by God that said that in the future, one was coming that would crush the power of evil. From the seed of the woman. That's by faith. All right? Those two things. Number one, the whole thing's by faith. Number two, in 315, God made a promise that he was going to send someone to crush the power of sin. And that was Jesus. All right? That's it right there. It's faith to believe the book. Faith to believe that. All right? So, no matter what you, wherever you end up, Either you're going to go to the fire, or you're going to go to the streets of gold and the jasper walls. But it isn't because you don't know. It's your decision. All right? So, That's right. Pretty simple. You love Jesus. I know you do. That's why you keep coming around here. All right? Thank you for listening. Adios. <laughs> All right. And you know something? The, the reason... Why I can stay put it again another way. The reason why we're on Periscope is because that love of God that is in us, and we love all of you out there with that love of God. The love of God is far deeper, higher, however you want to put it, than our simple human love. And we don't want anyone to go to hell just like God doesn't want people to go to hell and we truly love you out there and um, we just always hope and pray there will be some who will hear the message seriously consider it and make that all-important decision so that you can go to heaven we don't want anybody to go to hell. So that's it for today, my friends. Uh, you're welcome. Just me. I truly appreciate you listening. And hope you'll come back again. Norman is on um, every morning. Let me get this. This is his Periscope title. Thank you. And, uh, and then I'll be back on Tuesday and Wednesday. So, have a great day. Think about Jesus. So long. <laughs>